Hi everyone, this is Andy Summers at Trade Skills for You, and in this video we're going to be looking at ZE testing. ZE, the part of the earth fault loop impedance path that is external to the installation, hence the little E, ZE. We're also going to look at the difference between ZE and ZS at DB, and I'm also going to show you how to test for IPF or prospective fault current. The purpose of a ZE test is to determine whether or not an installation has a sufficient means of earthing. So in this diagram here, I'm showing the earth fault current for a TNS system. And the main earthing conductor, which is here, coming from the distributor and connecting to the main earthing terminal, or coming from an earth electrode or earth rod if this was a TT system, it has to be checked to make sure that um, it's continuous, that there's no break in it, and also that this value here meets the recommended value as recommended in the on-site guide uh, by the DNO itself. Uh, we'll look at those figures in a moment. But uh, why is it so important to check? Well, let's just start here. In the event of an, of an earth fault here, so we've got a line conductor touching the, an exposed conductive part of an installation. Could be the metal back box of a switch. So the current is flowing through the exposed conductive part, it's being picked up by the CPC which it's connected to, and then the fault current will flow down through the main earthing terminal. As this is a TNS system, it's flowing down the sheath of the cable all the way back to the transformer, where it will pick up the line conductor where the fault is, and the, you've got this what is called an earth fault loop path. When the fault hits the consumer unit, the distribution board, uh, the protective device should operate so long as the time taken for the current to flow around this loop is within a specified value. We need the resistance or the impedance of this path here to be a sufficient value in order for the protective devices to disconnect within the correct time. So that's why we've really got to check that the, uh, the earthing conductor from the distributor or going to our earth electrode is sufficient, does meet those, uh, those figures. So in order to do that, we have to disconnect it to test it because we don't want to be testing um, any other conductors. We might be getting parallel paths if we don't disconnect it. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. But the area that we're going to measure, if you like, let me just put it up, the, uh, is this external section here where we're measuring the incoming earthing conductor along with the incoming line conductor. And that is going to give us a value which is going to go on our certificate of ZE. This test has to be done at the origin of the installation with the main earthing conductor removed and the installation safely isolated. I'm going to show you how to connect the meter to do this test. Just to recap, the reason that we're doing a ZE test is twofold. We want to make sure that there is an earth connection to the installation, and secondly that the value, the ZE value, is equal to or less than the value determined by the designer and those values quoted in the on-site guide by the distribution network operator. So here's the installation. This is the origin of the installation. So this is the distribution board or the consumer unit that is at the origin. And as you can see, we're going to disconnect the main earthing conductor. We have to make sure that the installation is safely isolated, as removing the means of earthing would be very dangerous if we hadn't isolated the installation. Uh, once we've isolated, we can disconnect the conductor, clamp onto it, and then our other two leads on our meter go around the incoming line and the neutral uh, tails, which obviously will still be live. Now, most modern meters, i just make this note here, most modern uh, meters or earth fault loop impedance testers have got three leads. So they need the neutral in order to conduct the test. However, some uh, newer meters have only got two leads, so it will be a question of just reading your manufacturer's instruction with your meter as to whether or not you need the two leads or the three leads. So the values that are quoted in the on-site guide uh, by the distribution network operator are as follows. 
For a TNCS earthing system, we need a maximum ZE, no greater than 0.35 ohms. For a TNS system, then the maximum value of ZE uh, is 0.8 ohms. And a TT system, well, an earth rod, they recommend 21 ohms, but they can vary. And the on-site guide says that anything over 200 ohms may be unstable. So a TTZE is going to vary. For the purpose of this video, we are now at the origin of the installation with the uh, metering equipment and the main fuse. Here is the main earthing terminal with the main earthing conductor coming from the DNO and then an earthing conductor connecting to the earth terminal within the consumer unit. And it's at this point that I will remove the earthing conductor for the test. I need an incoming supply in order to do a ZE test, so I'm just going to use my approved voltage indicator. Earth terminal to incoming line, 230 volts. Uh, just check that the neutral is dead. Yep, back on the line. This also is a test to confirm supply polarity. I'll just show you where it goes on the electrical installation certificate. So it could be on page one or page two, depending on which certificate you're using. But here you can see a, a little tick box, confirmation of supply polarity. So as we've just proven it with that previous test, we can put a little tick in the box there. There's also a box on the schedule of test results in the, uh, the top left hand corner here. And once you've confirmed supply polarity, at the, this is the test sheet for the main incoming board, uh, we can put a, a tick in that box as well to confirm that the supply polarity is correct. Now going to remove the main earthing conductor from the earth terminal. Normally there would be lots of CPCs and maybe bonding conductors in here, so it's essential that I remove the conductor in order that that is just the conductor that I'm testing. I don't want any parallel paths. Get our meter, turn it to loop high setting, and then connect our earth clamp to the removed earthing conductor. Notice how the installation is safely isolated. And then the next two probes, the line and the neutral on the incoming tails, make sure we've got a voltage on our meter and press the button. And the ZE uh, is 0.50. Now I'm just going to remember that because it's essential at this point that I put that earthing conductor back in. We must re reconnect the earthing conductor immediately after the test. Never leave an earthing conductor out longer than is necessary. The minute you've done the test, put that conductor back in, tighten it up. So now we can write that on our electrical installation certificate. And again, either on page one or page two, you will see supply characteristics and earthing arrangements up here. And this is the area that we're in. And here we have ZE. And in this box here, we need to put the value. So we've just got a value there of 0.50 ohms. We can drop the zero and put 0.5 in that box there. Our ZE test was taken at the origin of the installation with the main earthing conductor removed. Now if we do a, an earth vault loop impedance test anywhere else within the installation, other than at the origin, then there's going to be this part of the circuit involved. There's going to be um, an R1, R2 value to take into account, as you can see here. Now, if this area of our installation was another distribution board, we would have ZE that we've just measured at the origin, and then we would have the R1, R2 of any sub-main, which would consist of a line, a neutral, and a CPC, like we can see here. So this area in our installation could be another distribution board or consumer unit and a test taken at this point would be what is known as a ZS test and ZS as you will see in uh, the on-site guide is ZE plus R1 R2 it's this whole circuit that takes into account the ZE at the origin plus the R1 R2 of any sub-main to another board that's going to be known as a ZS value and on our schedule of test results in the top left hand corner you will see ZS at DB. 
I have to do a ZS at DB at the installation origin as well. So set my meter to high. This time the earthing conductor stays connected. Now because there are no parallel paths here, I'm expecting to get the same reading. And in a domestic situation, it would probably be the same reading here. But here we go. And there we go. 0 0.50 ohms. ZS at dB. On the schedule of test results for the distribution board or the consumer control unit at the origin, the top left hand box there where you can see uh, ZS at dB up here in this area here, which is where we now write that value. Now in this example it was exactly the same as the ZE, however we still write it on if it's the same. In a domestic environment it can often be the same, or with parallel paths connected it could be slightly lower. Uh, however, you just do the test as I've shown you and you write the value in this box on the schedule of test results. The purpose of a prospective fault current test of the origin of the installation is to ensure that the amount of current flowing in the event of a fault won't exceed the rated value of the, the main fuse. Now to do this test, we clamp onto the earth bar with all the earths, the bonding and the CPCs all connected. And we're doing a ZS at dB, effectively, like we've just done, 0 0.50. Now, our meter will calculate for us what is known as this prospective earth fault current. Let's press the button, and there we go, 486.6 amps. Now, fault current is expressed as kiloamps, so in this case, our prospective earth fault current, our PEFC, is 0 0.486 kiloamps, or 0 0.49. Now we have to test how much current would flow in the event of a short circuit fault at the origin and to do that we need to combine our earth and our neutral probes together. Now some meters you can do this at the touch of a button. Uh, with the meter I'm using you've physically got to make the join between the earth and the neutral and put a probe on and now test between the incoming live tails, so the line and the neutral coming in. So this is how much current would flow in the event of a short circuit. So this is known as prospective short circuit current. Now when we press our button, we're going to get an impedance here, first of all, between the line and the neutral. So we're going to get a reading in ohms. Well, we don't need that for any certification. So we can just press the button. Let's have a look at the short circuit current. There it is, 408.9 amps or 0 0.40 or 0 0.41. Our IPF, our prospective fault current, is quite simply the highest of these two values. The value of IPF can now be written on our electrical installation certificate under the supply characteristics and earthing arrangements where earlier we'd written RZE of 0.5 and it's just in the box above there where you can see IPF in kiloamps. So I'm going to round up our IPF of 0 0.486 to 0 0.49 and put it in the box there. This value of IPF can also be written on the top left hand side of our schedule of test results, just underneath where we'd written our ZS at DB reading of 0 0.5 um, in this area here. And so let's put in there our 0 0.49 and we confirmed our supply polarity earlier, so let's just make sure that we tick that box too. I've locked off this board further down the line to show how to do ZS at DB at a, a board that's not at the origin. So when we come to do our test, we just simply clamp on to the earth bar, nothing is removed, all the earths are in, meter on the loop high setting if there's no RCD beforehand, and then onto the incoming line and neutral, press the button, and this is my ZS at dB. I'm further down the line, so I'm getting 0 0.67 ohms, and now when I press the button, I'm going to get my prospective earth fault current of 0 0.368 kiloamps. I've now got to do my short circuit current here and find out which of the two readings is going to be the highest to get my fault current. So let's join the earth and the neutral again. As I say, some meters you can do this at the touch of a button. I've got to do it physically with this meter. 
Earth in neutral leads together, and then onto the incoming tails, uh, the line and the neutral. And I'm going to press the meter. I'm still on loop high. Press the meter. The first reading is going to be uh, the impedance between the line and the neutral, which I don't need. So I'll press my button. And there is my prospective short circuit current of 0 0.308 kiloamps. IPF is the highest of these two, so I'm going to be entering 0 0.368 on my certificate. For my schedule of test results at this particular consumer unit, which is not at the origin, then um, I'm going to fill out this area here, ZS at DB and IPF at DB. So the ZS at the DB to 0 0.67. And notice how the IPF further down the line is reduced as the further you go down the line, as the um, impedance increases, the prospective fault current decreases which is why it's so important to do it at the origin, because that will be the highest value that would be measured in an installation. So the highest of my earth fault current and my short circuit current is going in that box there. I've just rounded it up to 0 0.37. And supply polarity was confirmed earlier, so let's just give it a tick. So there we go. ZE, ZS at DB, and prospective fault current testing. This has been Andy Summers at Trade Skills for You. Thank you for watching. For more information on all our courses, please visit our website www.tradeskillsforyou.co.uk. Bye bye.